now watching West Harper Community Sorry. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. My name is Andrea Judici and I am your host. I'm very excited to be back for my second episode. Thank you all for coming back as well to watch. I am not introducing my guide dog. That is to ensure his focus and my safety, but I am delighted to introduce my guests. I have Amy Barzak, Leah Goldberg, and Rachel Goldberg. And today I'm going to be talking about Jonathan's dream reimagined. Many of you who live in West Hartford may know about Jonathan's Dream. It's a very exciting project and, and realization of a dream that came true 20 years ago and was an accessible playground which enabled play for people of all abilities. That playground has had to be taken down and so Jonathan's Dream Reimagined Playground is the recreation of a fabulous opportunity to have equal play. As a child growing up, I never knew that there was such a thing as an accessible playground, mostly because there weren't when I was growing up back in the dinosaur ages. And so the reason that I'm talking about this today on my show is that I think it's so exciting that not only do accessible playgrounds exist in the world, but that there's going to be one right here in West Hartford and that the, basically the birth of this movement happened right here in West Hartford. So that's so exciting. And to start talking to us about the history of how Jonathan's dream came to be and um, fill in that, that piece, Amy, I'd love to turn it over to you. Thank you very much. So in the summer of 1994, I was at a local park in West Hartford and I saw a beautiful little girl in a wheelchair sadly watching the other children play on a playground that she couldn't get to or play on. I was there with my son Jonathan, who was happy and healthy at the time, and my three-year-old son Daniel. I thought somebody should do something about this. Shouldn't playgrounds be for children of all abilities, especially here in West Hartford, such a wonderful community that we are all a part of. Fast forward to that fall, Jonathan was diagnosed with a terrible disease called spinal muscular atrophy. It's a lot like Lou Gehrig's disease where the muscles waste away. And then just before Christmas, they changed his diagnosis to terminal. Still makes me get a lump in my throat to think about that. And the hospice counselor at UConn Medical Center encouraged us to think of a project we could do in his honor, something we could imagine would make him smile. And we thought about that little girl we'd seen at the park and thought, how about a playground where people of all ages and all abilities could celebrate life together? That's fantastic. So that was the idea and the genesis of it. And what were the steps that you took and what, how did that first playground come to be and, and what was it like? So I guess the first step was probably the most painful one for me was that Jonathan died on January 5th of 1995. And for the first three months after his death, my family was just a mess. We just didn't really know what to do. But then his birthday was coming up on April 1st and we held our first community meeting and we invited the entire community to come and help us imagine Jonathan's dream. More than 50 people came to that very first meeting and that level of interest just kept growing and growing. By the time we were done, more than a thousand people had helped volunteer to build Jonathan's dream and to do the fundraising for it. That's fantastic, that's really, really cool. The good news was that the people of our community and actually 
29 communities around Connecticut and Massachusetts all came together. What's interesting was that I didn't know anything about playground design, and I didn't know anything about inclusive playgrounds either. But what I did know was how to reach out to the children and families of all ages and all abilities who would be able to and want to use it and ask them for their ideas. In fact, we had dreaming and design parties where we invited children with disabilities to tell us what they'd love to have in a playground if they oh. could imagine that there could be a place where they could play. Oh, that's so <laughs> terrific. What a great idea. We learned so much. And what's interesting is the kids did not want any special breaks. They just wanted a chance to play mm -hmm. like everyone else. And so the playground was built, and where, where was it built? So it was built in the fall of 1996 on the campus of the Mandel JCC. And it was built by more than a thousand volunteers over a very rainy three week <laughs> period. <laughs> I kept imagining that it shouldn't be raining. You know, if we were doing such a good thing in the community, the sun should be shining, but it wasn't. Um, and so we worked with schools and volunteers and rotary clubs and use your imagination. Everybody <laughs> from all walks of life were there helping to create the original Jonathan Street. And that's really exciting because you said it was in 1996. And what's really cool is that in, we're now in, 19, in 2016 and it would be so wonderful if the creation and the building of this new Jonathan's Dream playground could, have, could start, well complete would be great, but at least start at this 20 year anniversary. That would be really, really a, a wonderful sort of full circle. And that brings us actually to Rachel and Leah Goldberg, who are here with us in the studio. And they are part of the volunteer community outreach team. And I'm going to ask them to say a few things. But I wanted to mention that Ronit Shoham, who is a amazing volunteer, professional volunteer, you might say, in the greater Hartford area, she is the volunteer um, project manager for Jonathan's Dream. And I actually call her the honorary godmother because she is helping to shepherd the rebuilding of Jonathan's dream. And let me ask you a quick question before we, we switch over. So we've talked about rebuilding Jonathan's dream and we talked about the original Jonathan's dream. So what was the, what is the reason that the original Jonathan's dream no longer is and there is a need to rebuild this new reimagined Jonathan's dream playground? So in 2013, um, the wood in Jonathan's dream started to deteriorate. And back in 1996, when it was built in the first place, you couldn't buy commercially available playground equipment. The only way to build an inclusive playground was to custom build it out of wood, which made sense at the time, but it turns out that wood playgrounds only last 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. And after a while, the wood starts to deteriorate and it created an unsafe environment. And so in 2013, much to many people's heartbreak, it had to come down still breaks my heart. <laughs> I'm sure. And so this Jonathan's Dream reimagined the new playground is going to be in the same footprint? Yes, exactly the same space. Um, matter of fact, if you were to drive by the site right now on Bloomfield Avenue, you would see basically an empty space that nature has taken back over. Okay. There are plants and shrubs and it is just waiting to be redeveloped. That's fabulous. So let me turn this over to you, Leah and Rachel and you can tell us, I hope, a little bit about how the new playground will look and appear in the, in the commercially available types of playground equipment and also s some of the ways that people can find out more about this really awesome project that's going on. Sure. Um, so what was so special about Jonathan's Dream was that it was a fully custom build 20 years ago. And because of the influence of Jonathan's Dream and being one of the country's first accessible playgrounds for children of all abilities and disabilities to play together, it really helped create a movement within the playground industry to build commercially um, made accessible play equipment. So now you can contact a company and purchase equipment that is meant to last 40 to 60 years um, that will be allow everyone to play together. So. Um, Moving forward, we'd like to build with this equipment. And Jonathan's Dream created this movement and this legacy, and now we can purchase this equipment that will last for many, many years. And that's really cool because what that means is not only can we do that here in West Hartford for Jonathan's Dream, but that anyone in the country um, 
presumably even the world, could purchase commercially produced accessible playground equipment. And a huge reason for that is because of what started here in West Hartford, Connecticut. So in 1996, when Jonathan's Dream first opened, um, there was an article in Time Magazine about it. And it led to people all over the country and the world calling and asking if how they could learn how to do that for the children in their own community. One of the communities that called us was Los Angeles. And a playground project that's called Shane's Inspiration was built there in, I think, like early 2000s. And they are now a nonprofit called Shane's Inspiration. And they are helping us with the redesign of Jonathan's Dream. And so here, I helped Shane's Inspiration back 15, almost 20 years ago. And now they are a nonprofit that is turning around and helping us to redesign Jonathan's Dream. So isn't that a beautiful way the world comes full circle? That is. That is such a, a wonderful story. And how it must be for you to know that in spite of all of the, the pain and the sadness has come this amazing movement, not just, again, here in West Hartford, but that spread and spread and grown. And that all over the country and the world, children are being able to play together because of what you and your family envisioned. It makes me feel like Jonathan's legacy has been to change the world in this, what I think is very significant way. That is, that is really, really awesome. Rachel, can you tell me a little bit about um, what, the, what this playground is going to, to be, to look like? I understand we may not know how the exact mm -hmm. equipment, but what types of equipment are we talking? What does an accessible playground really really look like when sure. you get to it. So the original Jonathan Stream playground was made out of wood and then the new one is going to be made out of the commercial accessible playground equipment that will be meant to last. Uh, it's 25,000 square feet of play area which is five times the size of a regular playground. So what we've decided to do is break it into some themed sections. So we've got one area that's a beluga whale themed in honor of Jonathan's love of baby beluga song. And then we have another section that's going to look like a tree house to be dedicated towards the original wood structure. Um, throughout, we've got um, specialized play equipment, such as uh, swings that have high backs to allow somebody who's not able to keep themselves positioned, uh, seated, seated straight up, uh, to enjoy a swing. We have things such as um, non-static roller slides that allow somebody who has a hearing aid or a cochlear implant to be able to enjoy a slide without the static interference. Um, we have different play exercises and activities as well as a sensory garden. And we have many aspects of uh, a typical playground that you see. You've got climbing areas, you've got swings, you've got you know different stylized monkey bars and things like that. What's great about the playground is any, because it's so large, any time a child comes and explores it, they'll find some new way to enjoy it. Never mind children, I can't wait to play at this playground. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited about this. I, I loved playgrounds as a kid, but the thought of all of these really cool things that makes this such a different kind of playground. How wonderful for anyone who needs it to be accessible, but also how wonderful for just everybody because what fun it will be to be at a playground that's not like every other playground. It's, it's, um, it's really, really exciting. What are some of the, how can some people learn about what is going on? How can we get more information about this whole process so, and how to become involved? So there's plenty of ways to learn more about Jonathan's Dream. Um, one of the things that we have done is that um, in the beginning of this process to um, fundraise and rebuild Jonathan's Dream, um, the a task, alumni task force from Leadership Greater Hartford was formed and they created a website. Um, it's uh, www.jonathansdreamreimagined.org and it has a lot of great information about the process of not only the building and construction of the original Jonathan's Dream, and the impact that it had on the country, but also how uh, you can get involved and support our efforts to rebuild Jonathan's Dream. Something that Rachel and I have really focused on is how we can get the information out to the community um, very easily and accessible for everyone. One of the things we've done is started a Facebook page called Jonathan's Dream Reimagined, and people can join our Facebook page um, and we try to post um, somewhat regularly um, any events that we're holding um, or any great um, 
information that we can pass along, any milestones in our fundraising goals um, that we post on there, as well as people can communicate with us. And then we have a GoFundMe page um, as well. Now, I know that we're not supposed to talk about money. That's one of those things Mother told you never to talk about. However, can I get a ballpark as to um, what this will cost and where we are in the fundraising process? Sure. So this playground, we're looking to raise $1.2 million. And it sounds like a lot. Uh, and it is a lot. Um, it's a huge step for us. Um, it includes the 25,000 square feet of playground equipment to, to totally fill the playground, as well as um, include a sensory garden and some walking paths. It also includes the building of accessible bathrooms that will be on site and available to all to use. And Amy can uh, fill you in on more information about where we are in our goal. We have at this point, thanks to a lot of very generous people and a grant from the state of Connecticut, we've raised almost $800,000. So we have a little bit more to go. Um, and right at the moment, we have a challenge grant from the Goldfarb families where they'll match all contributions up to $50,000. So we're hoping that in December and January, we will make substantial progress and in a perfect world, we'll be able to order the playground equipment in the spring and recruit volunteers to help rebuild Jonathan's dream in the summer or fall of 2016 and then celebrate the 20th anniversary of Jonathan's dream in the fall of 2016. That is so, it's such a wonderful plan and it really sounds like, like that's a possibility. It's it really sounds like that's right within reach. I think we can make this happen. It feels that way to me. And I sit here so proud to be here with Rachel and Leah Goldberg. They grew up playing at the original Jonathan's Dream. They helped raise money for the cause for many years. And now here they are, young professionals out in the working world. And they've come back and have been the outreach team that has been spreading the word and inviting people to participate. And so I'm just really so happy to Thank be you. here with Thank both you. of you. Thank you. It's really interesting because I have just recently learned, I always knew something about some sort of playground thing when I moved to town, but I, I don't have kids, so it didn't really occur to me to do much more research about it. But I have since really learned in, in, in a lot through conversations with Leah and Rachel about all of what the history is of Jonathan's dream and all of what the future is, and I've gotten involved myself, and it's really exciting. And what's really interesting is that anytime we're at an event where we're fundraising for or s giving out information about Jonathan's dream, people stop and they say, well, I played there, or my kids played there, or I played there with my grandchildren. And so the, the name is so evocative of pleasure and enjoyment and wonderful time spent. And so, so many people are absolutely committed to seeing that come back. They're very sad to hear that it wasn't, isn't there right now and are so excited that it's coming back and so delighted that they can find a way to be involved, whether it's, we're gonna, I know that there's gonna be a community build when it's time, or community install when it's time for it to come to back. And so that's really exciting and people can give their time they can give whatever they have to give, whatever their ability is. Mm -hmm. And so many people speak with wonderful fondness about Jonathan's dream. So that's really an interesting thing for me to learn as I've gotten more involved in this, in this project. And I'm hoping that some of the people who are watching your show will go to the Jonathan's Dream Reimagined Facebook page and post some pictures of their families there and tell some of the stories of their families playing there. And it's so interesting because Jonathan's Dream was never just for kids. It was always an intergenerational playground for mm -hmm. children of all abilities. Matter of fact, the, the logo on the entry of the playground is a grandfather with a cane who actually represents Stanley Wiesen, a good friend um, who passed away in, I think, his late 80s. Um, Jonathan and a little girl. And so the idea was that it was always for children of all abilities. And my favorite stories are to go to the playground and to see people who've never played on a playground before playing for the first time, whether it's an injured soldier who's there with their child, or whether it's a grandparent from the Hebrew home, or everybody. And so it really is, you're right, something that connects to so many different people. And that's an interesting point that I never thought of. I've always thought of this as children 
of all abilities, whether it, whether they have a physical disability or some other disability that causes them to not be able to play as typically on a regular playground. But what you've just pointed out is that it's not, what if it's a parent or mm -hmm. a grandparent or Absolutely. a sister or an aunt or an uncle who has a disability, who goes there with a child who does not have a disability, mm -hmm. um, similar to when I read a book that's got print and braille so I can read to a child. It's not that I need the children's book for me, but that I can share that with the child. Mm -hmm. So that, that is another wonderful way that this playground can spread its joy and its love to people of all ages. Plus, I think we all can benefit from playing on playgrounds, even no matter how, whether we're one or you know 102. I think playgrounds Absolutely. bring out right. a wonderful joyousness in us that we need to not forget. And one of the special new features of Jonathan's Dream Reimagined is going to be side-by-side -side zip lines, and one will have a support swing, and the other one will have the kind the Tarzan type that you hang on to. So imagine that me and you and everybody up to 300 pounds, um, <laughs> will be able to use the special uh, zip line support swing and be able to fly. That's so, so Can incredible. you imagine? I, ca I can't, I want to, I want to go now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready right this minute to Me go too. play. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Yeah. And Amy brings up a great point is, it's meant to be fully inclusive. So it, it's not meant to be a playground where somebody who's able-bodied can play in one area and somebody who's not able-bodied, fully able-bodied can play in another area. It's meant to be fully inclusive, allow children to play together, and it's made to be built so it's not noticeable that there's special adaptations. So somebody who might not know the reason behind all of the equipment there might come and play at this amazing playground that's totally unique and something new to them and have this great new experience. But somebody in a wheelchair may understand that it, they can reach the highest point along with that able-bodied child as well. That yeah. is, is wonderful. And something I want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier, which is that the different sections represent different things. The, the fact that there's a tree house to, to reminisce about the fact that the original was made of wood and um, I just, how wonderful, what a, what a wonderful creative way of thinking so that you can celebrate the, the past and make that inclusive with your celebration of the current and the future. That is, that's so awesome. Right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just, go ahead. No, I was just gonna add to what you just said. One of my favorite stories of the original Jonathan's Dream was one day I was in the playground and there was, I think, three or four children waiting to use the special swing. And the special swing had armrests and back support and it, it reclined just a little bit. And there was a few children waiting to use it and the child at the end of the line was in a wheelchair. And I thought to myself, well, the other children should use the other swings because this little girl can only use the special swing. And I'm debating about going over to say something. And finally, I walk over, and the little girl's mother pulls me aside before I get there. And she said, were you going to tell the other children to let Sarah go to the head of the line? And I said, yes. And she said, don't you think Sarah should learn to take turns like everybody else? And isn't it wonderful that everyone thinks the special swing is so special? That is a great story. And I, I expect that there are thousands upon thousands of incidents like that and the Facebook page is a wonderful place as you mentioned to go and share those because I suspect that we have people throughout the town of West Hartford and probably throughout the state of Connecticut who can can remember things about that and, and lessons that they learned without ever going to the playground to learn a lesson right. but just incidentally through being there and and how wonderful it is to look around and have multiple people playing on multiple areas and as as you've mentioned not have it really ever be this big neon sign this is a special playground for special people but to have it just be this really cool playground where it just so happens that there are lots of people who can use it who may not be able to use another type of playground exactly absolutely, absolutely. And, and one of the other special things that's going to be there is when Jonathan's Dream was originally built there was a little boy named Matthew who was six years old and he has arthrogyroposis, um, which um, is a joint contracture disease. And he wanted a glider boat swing because he used to go on a boat with his grandfather and on his grandmother's glider swing. And in the original Jonathan's Dream, it was called the Dreamer. And it was made out of wood. 
and two or three people who use wheelchairs or, or walkers plus a half a dozen other friends could go on that swing together. And there is now a commercially available version of Matthew's glider boat swing that will be in the new Jonathan Stream. So I can't wait to see That's that too. So oh, I can't wait either. This is amazing. I just I think about the fact that who you know in in everyday life you don't think about these things, but how amazingly wonderful it is that there are accessible playground equipment. I mean, I remember I have a brother who's significantly younger than me, and playgrounds had changed a lot just even between my elementary school years and his. Mm -hmm. But to realize that along with that change came inclusiveness and the and the reality that just because you may use a wheelchair or use a walker or use a, a cane for mobility or whatever it is that you're doing, you don't see, you don't hear, why should you not want to have a really rock and cool playground like everybody else gets, or even more cool, it sounds like. Exactly. So how, I just, it's, I know I keep using the same words and I, that's, my English teachers would not be impressed. <laughs> but I really don't know what else to say except that it is just so awesome. We'll give you another tidbit of information, Andrea. Oh, and this is that Jonathan's Dream was one of America's first accessible playgrounds. So it set the new standard in the industry. Um, but now we're going to raise the bar once again. And we're going to focus on being the first fully active, inclusive playground. So all the activities that we have, the design of the playground, is really made to keep people playing together, but staying in motion. Um, and we're, we're looking at children to and adults to be able to continue to move throughout. So we'll raise that bar in accessibility once again. We definitely want people to come to interact with each other and not just play separately. And we want people to um, have a great time. So I can't celebrate see how life. that wouldn't happen. Oh, and, sorry, Amy. Oh, celebrate life. That yes. was the whole idea when Absolutely. we first did it, was we wanted to deal with the loss of Jonathan by celebrating life. I'm so excited to be learning about all of this. I want to just um, review what I've heard so that people can sort of remember the, the, the big points, one of which is to definitely go to www.jonathansdreamreimagined.org because that sounds like a really good resource to learn all about the history and the current and the future. I want to encourage all of my watchers to like Jonathan's Dream on Facebook Yes. and also to share their stories, their memories, their um, experiences at the original Jonathan's Dream. And I want for everyone to keep their ears open for upcoming events and the, to encourage the community that we're going to be doing a community install, community build when this is ready, ideally in, in the fall of 2016, if we can make that all happen. And that just as in the past, we definitely are looking for this to be a community effort to make, to reintroduce this incredible playground into our community. And I, am I right about all that? Did I get all Absolutely. that? Sounds great. Awesome. Sounds good. Awesome. Perfect. I get, I get my gold star for the day. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, and I want to thank each of you for coming on to my show. Amy, thank you for sharing all of your knowledge, but also the most personal part of this story, which even 20 years later, can still obviously not be very easy to talk about, and especially in such a public way. And I want to thank Leah and Rachel Goldberg for coming on. You guys are such a fabulous face for this organization and, to, and so instrumental and so personally involved because of having um, played there as children. I want to thank everyone out there in the TV watching world for tuning in again to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. My name is Andrea Judici, and it is my pleasure to be your host for this show. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.